many projects, um, especially in the open source area, work on a fork-based model, which means um, there's a main repository. If I want to change something in that software, I send a pull request to that main repository from my own fork. And as a maintainer of that um, um, repository, it means for me that I have to add every remote manually and check out that branch to run that code on my machine, which can be quite tedious. So in that case, here for pull request number, oops, for pull request number 11, um, I would um, check out, uh, I would add the remote Sean Barclay and check out his branch update sidebar. And when we take a look at that, this um, Git configuration, which is the default configuration um, for the Node.js project, um, we, we just don't have to accept <laughs> this workflow. We can just one, add one single line of code to tell Git to search into a different place for new references. And the next time I want to take a look at a pull request, I remember that number, which is 11, run git fetch, and then git checkout pr slash 11. And that was already the part of my talk regarding better tooling for repeated tasks. But I want to stay um, at the topic code reviews. And those are Bob and Alice. They work together in a company. And I have to say, I've seen that example 100 times probably in my career, maybe more, who knows. So Bob and Alice work on non-trivial topics. And um, Bob, Bob creates code and he needs a review. So Alice um, stops her current tasks and gives the review. And that's a critical point, because studies say um, if you are interrupted, you are doing twice as much errors, and people report increased stress, frustration, and pressure. Other studies also found out that it takes around 25 minute, minutes to resume a task where you were interrupted, which um, adds up for an hour uh, adds up to more than one hour if you are interrupted three times on a workday. So let's get back to Bob and Alice. Alice finds an issue with Bob's code, and um, the issue is that the code is not um, written according to the style guidelines of the project. So the code goes back to Bob, and Bob um, changes uh, the code. And after a certain time, he needs a review again for the changed, um, for the changed um, code. And um, so, so um, Alice plans to, to give the review. And we, are, we, are, we have here already two interruptions which, when you remember my study, um, adds up to 40 to 50 minutes already. And then um, something happens. Um, Bob didn't work properly, and Alice finds a bug which was introduced by the change request in the review, and so the code has to go back to Bob again, and this could basically go on and on forever um, um, until um, maybe they get too annoyed. <laughs> so I think it's really important to avoid iterations. And one way to do that is to pre-check as much as possible. For example, with um, things like, uh, like code, static code analysis and uh, proper testing, automatic testing. And it's also important to think if everyone has everything needed to work when I give them a task. For example, 
if I submit um, uh, uh, feature uh, um, uh, a patch which is fixing a complex bug and my code, uh, code commit message just contains um, bad error fix, then probably the person who's reviewing that code can't see my intention, um, what um, I want to change there, and also has no idea how to reproduce the steps. So two hours after I su submitted my pull request and my change request, and I'm already working on other things, um, the person gets back to me because obviously I didn't describe my, my problem and my intention very well, and I'm interrupted this time, um, which uh, results in um, the uh, loss of time and the other bad things I reported and the studies found. And another way to avoid iterations is to focus on pair programming because... Um, Oh, by the way, who's doing pair programming um, on a regular basis? Wow, wow, okay, a few people. So, um, with pair programming, you, you basically review the code together while you are writing it together. So, um, you are giving the review while you write the code, and um, it's a lot more collaborative and um, to work as a pair on a problem. And I hope you are still with me, because otherwise you would miss that gigantic horse nose behind me on that wall in a hotel in Berlin. And additionally, I want to mention my ultimate source of wisdom, which is not a volcano, it's also not a Ruby on Rails book, which is outdated. And it's also not a pizza. It's my team. And I remember one particular, um, one particular experience where we had our stand-ups, and for multiple stand-ups, a colleague reported that he noticed that the CI was running twice and it would and it takes almost an hour because every CI run uh, runs half an hour, and when it runs twice, obviously it gets uh, it, it runs to uh, for an hour. So after a few times, um, I thought, "Wow, yeah, that's a really good question. So why is the CI running twice?" And after logging in to our CI system, it turned out there was no particular reason for us to run um, the CI twice in our specific project situation. It was just a default configuration from the CI system. So by just removing one small check mark, I was able to, um, to speed up the build by 100%, which I think um, you can imagine led to a loss, lot less waiting for the team to wait on finished builds. Do you remember my slide on interruptions? So studies also say that technical leaders um, are having around 120 interruptions per day, which, which will always take up the whole work time. And they also report that um, most of them say they were useful in general, but only 10% of them were urgent. And we can try to define something, what I would like to call a maker's time, a defined maker's time. And for some people who work remotely, like me, it's quite easy. I just turn off my chat and my email client for two hours and then work uninterrupted on that problem, and then I return again into um, the usual communication channels. For other people, it, has, um, it, it has, has proven useful to just change the room in the company or to go to a cafe around the corner. 
And it really sounds scary in the beginning, but um, your team will be really happy about the increased productivity and also get used to it um, once, once uh, the positive effects are happening. And now I want to mention um, my last example, with, with, um, which is about disadvantages. Um, they are, time zones really suck. They are my favorite example as a remote worker. And um, so why not, why not leveraging them? Why not making use of them? And that is a map of my current team. And I'm usually hanging out somewhere in Europe. And our designer is based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And when we take a closer look at our work days, we have just a small time frame where we meet, meet each other every day. And the rest of the time, we don't meet, uh, see each other but that also means, expressed in a positive way, that we have almost a full working day to work uninterrupted from each other. So, um, with a little bit of discipline, um, uh, for example, if I'm working on a prototype, um, I have the full day until, until the evening to work on that prototype and implement uh, some ideas we had together, then in our, our in the time frame we have together, we um, share our screens and click on that prototype and make experiments and collect feedback together and um, uh, think about things that, that aren't working well yet. And then the San Francisco-based person has basically their whole working day to iterate on the concept and on the design. And the next morning when I wake up in my time zone and I open my mailbox, there are new designs in the mailbox and I can work again the full day on that new um, changes. My conclusion, observe everything. Um, take a step back. Um, Think, what am I doing multiple times a day or per week? Then think, are others are doing it too? Um, think of uh, my time zone example. Um, can, you, can, can we turn disadvantages into advantages? Think of the small checkbox in the CI system. Small changes can have a big impact. And um, limit your interruptions as much as possible. Um, focus on continuous improvement. Um, I think everyone can improve. And even if it's just a small thing, I think everybody can do something. Because the only alternative to improving is to worsen. There's, there's nothing in between, basically. That's basically it. Um, thank you very much. Um, if there are questions, I'm open to questions.